All right, here we got Robert Breaker making the claim, even the order of the books in the Bible prove a pre-trib rapture. All right, so let me preface all this by saying I like Robert Breaker, but when it comes to end-time eschatology, he's absolutely wrong. But this guy bangs the drum constantly, and so... I have to bang the drum, the drum of truth, constantly. We are in a constant war. There's no way I can convince this guy. I can't convince you. I can't convince anybody. What I can do is show you the truth. All right. So let's get into the truth. So let's go. <clears throat> let's go to. First of all, this is the one that really amazes me. Is Matthew 24. Uh, first of all, let's go to 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, nor ever shall be. So, what these people do is they confuse this great tribulation with the wrath of God. And ig very ignorantly so. All right. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Right? Now, it's interesting, for then shall be great tribulation. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So, just by that alone, we can determine with absolute certainty that during this great tribulation there will be people getting saved all right because those days are going to be shortened and it's real simple this is just meaning that there's at the very end there's not going to be very many saved people and um, so we're slowly and very subtly um, living in a world that is desolate of faith. And I, let me show an example for this. Um, what is that? Uh, God shall avenge them speedily and he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man comes shall he find faith on earth question mark so everything that Jesus is pointing out here because he's asked remember he's asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and he mentions all these troubles that we're going to endure and the point of these and the point of enduring is that these things will get gradually worse and worse the evidence is just amazing let's do this here men's hearts shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so things are going to gradually get worse and worse, so much so that the common fella is not going to be able to notice it. All right, and so, uh, again, uh, there's going to be saved people. If any man shall say unto you, believe it not, okay, for there shall arise... Uh, false Christ and if it were possible they shall deceive the very like so this is more evidence that there are going to be saved people during this time should absolutely be no doubt about it so let's get into and then of course like I can't ignore this I mean this is so blatant it's incredible really immediately immediately after the tribulation then comes our Lord Jesus Christ and this is the end of the world immediately after the tribulation 
it's the end of the world blatantly blatantly obvious okay so let me uh, let me show you something here all right so he's got <clears throat> he's got three and a half days or years or they want to call it the seven year tribulation that comes from uh, what is that Daniel 9 I forget already I forget is it Daniel 9 let's find out yeah and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease that's what Jesus did on the cross when he offered his body as a sacrifice as an offering to God once for all now, that's already fulfilled but somebody's come along and said no that's not Jesus or or what they're really saying is that's the Antichrist now let me ask you <clears throat> excuse me let me ask you is the Messiah is the Messiah the Antichrist because that's really what it comes down to if you believe the Messiah is the Antichrist then you have then it's it's not all that illogical to imagine all this crap right there and that's what that is that's all crap because the rapture is the end of the world the millennium is right now this here is the death of Christ where he offers his body once for all I want to show you these verses so that you don't think I'm making this stuff up by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all now that's what happened here on the cross the the rapture which is what we read here in verse 31 tw Matthew 24 verse 31 and they shall gather together his elect talking about the angels when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that's the rapture and the rapture is the end of the world all right so what we got to go to uh, revelation 24 or i'm sorry revelation yeah. yeah turn your books now to revelation 24 and call me in three days when you figure out it's not in the bible okay revelation 20 In verse 11 and I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away there was found no place for them this is parallel with the sun being darkened the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken alright so we go here and he's got the tribulation as if we're not going to have any tribulation at all it's all going to be peachy everything's just fine um, you know the world is I mean, really why is the world coming to an end if the tribulation happens after we are raptured the reason why we're raptured why the reason why we're delivered from this world is because it's wicked it's we're not going to be delivered from this world and then the world become wicked the world already is wicked uh, to me it's backwards thinking and it it's totally contrary to what the Bible says now the millennium this is what they never talk about see where's the rest of this so you're saying Jesus Christ reigns 1,000 years um, what happens when he stops reigning they never talk about that why does Jesus Christ 
he starts raining when he after he's not raining right now apparently he's not raining right now he's gonna rain for this little period of time and then he's gonna stop raining again they don't talk about that do they Luke chapter 1 verse 33 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever man. shouldn't this say a thousand years I mean come on man and of his kingdom there shall be a thousand years no no end. and of his kingdom there shall be no end you might as well take your magic marker and cross that out of your Bible if you're gonna teach us stuff why do they constantly refuse to talk about this what they want to say okay look they're gonna paint a picture of this millennium they're gonna say all these things that are happening they are actually all happening right now saved people unsaved people you got people born of God and people and children of the devil it's the same thing the same thing that's happening here is happening here so if you're able to connect the dots all you do is you take this and put that there you take this and you put that there and at the end of the world I mean it's so simple Jesus explains it better than anybody he will come in the clouds of heaven <clears throat> we are lifted up at the great sound of a trumpet and the angels of heaven gather together his elect and we go to, we can go to Matthew 13 let me do it this way and he gives a parable of the kingdom of heaven and talks about how the wheat and the tare are both growing together let them both grow together until the harvest and the harvest is the end of the world so at the end of the world the wheat and the tares are separated the tares are burned and the wheat is preserved same thing what we read here in Matthew 24 All right, same thing what we're reading here in Revelation 20 the wheat are gathered tares are burned and we are changed or you know the wheat is processed into you know cereal or whatever you know um, but uh, there's this idea that well we're gonna process the wheat and we're gonna process the tares and we're gonna mix them together for a period of time that's not it's not even practical it's not this stupid is what it is I mean if I'm being honest it's just dumb just dumb all right so uh, maybe somebody will figure this out and realize hey this here the three and a half days or three and a half years or whatever you, you know three and a half seconds whatever the 42 months you know all this stuff uh, it's not in the Bible uh, not 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 at well I'd have to get into this here let's not even do that I, I want to close it right here it's not connecting the dots here and um, so maybe somebody will get it it's not complicated this here makes no sense whatsoever so you got <clears throat> you got Armageddon you got like, like Armageddon is that the I guess the wrath of God according to the Bible that's that's what it is according you know when the devil is loosed 
at the end of the thousand years and he gathers together the unsaved at our feet till I make thine enemies thy footstool and thy head shall bruise his heel right Jesus is gonna stomp out evil forever till I make thine enemies thy footstool so this everything's gonna be destroyed all weakness is gonna, going to be destroyed so why what's this how can you have unsaved people after all wickedness is destroyed I'm telling you this is such a strange doctrine it makes me wonder if how it ever crept into Christianity really alright that's enough